All right, guys, we've got another impending free agent to look at for these Seattle Seahawks. And this is another one that is not near the top of anybody's priority list, I don't think. But we need to discuss it because it's something to be discussed. Phil Haynes. we got to talk about Phil Haynes here for a little bit. Uh, he's been with the Seahawks for quite some time now, actually, in 2019. That doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it has been. Uh, his journey through the NFL so far has been very strange, to put it mildly. He's been off and on this team, I feel like, three different times. He was on the rookie deal. He got hurt. He came back, got hurt, came back, off the team, on the team, practice squad. Just been kind of back and forth for Phil Haynes. And here we are right now trying to make a decision on this guy. And he's not making it easy because when he plays, he's inconsistent and he frequently doesn't play. This is a player who has always been kind of injury prone, and because of that, it's hard to make an evaluation. I think we can safely say he's not that good. He's NFL caliber, but he's not really starting caliber. If you bring him back, I suspect you will do so as a backup. Now, if you want to bring Phil Haynes back to start, I don't know why you'd want to do that for many different reasons, but if you did he would probably be looking for something that is a raise over his previous contract because if you take a look, he's currently sitting on a one-year $4 million deal that he signed with the Seahawks last offseason, and uh, that was building on the one-year $2.5 million deal he got with the Seahawks the previous season. So if you bring him back to start again, that's basically saying, we approve of the job you're doing, and he's going to hear that and go, okay, then give me a raise, Probably to something like six million a year, probably one year six million. I don't think you would go long term with Phil Haynes. Now, hopefully that's not going to happen. I'm going to say that right now. I really, really hope we don't do that. Um, if you do want to bring him back as a starter, I think the minimum you're getting away with is like one year five million or two years ten million, probably closer to that six million a year mark. So, what did Phil Haynes do last year, according to the experts? We go to PFF, not much. They they thought he was passable in 2022. And they thought he was a little bit worse in 2023, but that's not what we're looking at. This is basically what they looked at in 2022. This is what got him that $4 million deal. He did offer some left guard, right guard versatility, which is nice, that helps, but not a very good player, not a very notable player. And at the end of the day, he was somebody who was probably considered not starting caliber by most teams. Just not the Seahawks because they did decide to bring him in and name him the starter for the start of the season. <coughs> so if we're going to find comparisons, and again, this is the scenario where we bring him back to be a backup. Because that's a little more viable, right? You bring him in for depth because he's familiar with the team. He's familiar with these teammates. He's familiar with guys like Lucas and Forsyth and Cross. And if you bring back other interior offensive linemen, he'll be familiar with them. That's a little more digestible, but in order to understand what kind of money he might be able to get, we got to go way down this list again. We got to go way down past the starters, past the stars, past the guys who are clearly good because Phil Haynes is not any of that. Got to keep going and keep going. And the first guy I'm going to stop on here is Nick Gates with the uh, commanders coming from the Giants last offseason was 27 when he signed this deal, three years, 16 and a half million that's five and a half million per. And you take a look at what he did to earn that money. I mean, he didn't play that much. He didn't play that good, it looks like. It was okay. He did offer positional versatility, played left, played center, played tight end a little bit. So I don't think we're there yet, but you can kind of see we're not that far off already. These veteran backup inside offensive linemen do not come super cheap. So I look at a guy like Nick Gates. And by the way, if you want to play the Phil Haynes' injury-prone card. Nick Gates went through one of the worst injuries that you will ever see in the NFL, came back and got this deal. So we can't even say that. So let's go past Nick Gates a little bit here and go down to Will Hernandez, who last offseason got two years, $9 million with the uh, Cardinals. And Will Hernandez, the previous year, played a decent number of snaps, played a good chunk of the season, was graded out pretty decently, was exclusively right guard, so not quite as good as the flexibility of Haynes, but he was actually a pretty decent player. So he did end up getting that $9 million over two years, which 
that's a little more palatable. I think we're maybe starting to kind of get somewhere with uh, the Hernandez comp, maybe. Uh, at the very least, it's in the conversation. Here's um, Haynes, by the way. He uh, comes in right around here, so you can get an idea of the territory he's in. And then we kind of got to go way down because a bunch of these guys are on rookie deals. Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson, Tyler Smith. Not looking at those guys because their contracts don't mean anything. Sorry if you can hear my sugar glider over there. He's uh, chirping. Uh, next guy I want to look at would be Dan Feeney, who signed a one-year, three-and-a-quarter million dollar deal with the Bears. Um, well, he originally signed it with Miami and then went to the Bears. So what did Dan Feeney do in 2022 to earn that? He played very little. And when he did play, he wasn't graded out that well. He played mostly at right guard. I guess he did offer a little bit of left guard flexibility, but the minimal amount, pretty much. So you can kind of see how we've already kind of, it seems to me, gone past even Phil Haynes' territory. Even if Phil Haynes is willing to acknowledge that he didn't live up to expectations last year, and he didn't play very well, and he got hurt again, and he doesn't deserve a raise... I don't get the sense he's going to be taking a pay cut beyond what a guy like Dan Feeney got. At the very least, if you're being objective, he doesn't need to, right? You keep going down the list, you've got Vitae here, the uh, guard he signed with the Alliance this offseason for $3 million flat. What did Vitae do the previous year to earn that money? He did absolutely nothing. He did not play. Um, missed the entire 2022 season, did not play a snap. Now, the previous year, he played quite a bit and played good. So they, he was obviously getting paid based off of that. But he basically, this guy, Vitae, took a season off and was still able to get one year $3 million. So I don't think Phil Haynes, who at least played last year, is going to do that. You got a guy like Dalton Risner down here now. He got one year $3 million uh, after 2022. And in 2022, he, I mean, he played more than Phil Haynes, but he played about as competently as Phil Haynes, right? And this was a guy who had a kind of a negative reputation coming out of that Bronco season. He was a guy who was considered someone who was slipping every year, so there was just never any market for him. So even though a guy like this might give you hope that you can get Phil Haynes for cheaper, I, I don't see that. I don't see it that way. I, I look at a guy like Vitae and say we've probably gone too far. I think at the very minimum you're in Dan Feeney territory and quite possibly you're coming in a little below Will Hernandez but I, I, I don't think you're going to get down much further than what he was last year, which was $4 million. I think if you bring back Phil Haynes, you're going to have to give him at least $3.5 million a year. At least $3.5 million a year. Probably just a one-year deal because he's that kind of player. But I don't think you're going to get away with giving him, like, vet men. Like, vet men guards tend to be guys who are just completely throwaway players that almost never play and nobody really knows about them. Like, there are some guys down here I'm looking at who I, I haven't seen these guys before. For the most part, I'm not familiar with them, and they're still making more than veteran minimum. Now, again, I want to stress, Phil Haynes is not the kind of player who's guaranteed anything. He might slip through the cracks, and if nobody's willing to give him a starting job, he might show up deep in the offseason and be like, look, just give me the veteran minimum to be your backup, and I'll take it. That can happen. Guys like Phil Haynes are not guaranteed a contract. But if you try to be objective about this and look at him as a player compared to other players that have gotten X amount of dollars, I do think you're looking at something like one year, three and a half million as a backup. As a starter, that's a different story. That's probably closer to like five and a half, six. Would I do that? No. I don't think I'm giving Phil Haynes anything more than like two million. If he wants to come back for two million or less, then sure, he's better than some guy off the street. And there is some, there there have been some flashes with him that I like. Um, I liked him more as a rookie than I like him now, honestly, which is a problem. But if it's like one year, two million, I'll do it. More than that, I just want to turn this uh, guard, th this interior offensive line room over. I just want to flip over the whole thing and get new guys in here because I'm tired of that group. I, I'm just tired of that group basically sinking our season last year. I'm tired of thinking going into each season that this is the year these guys are going to show us something really good and then they don't like I'm, I'm kind of just tired of it and I want to look at different guys like I'm tired of looking at these guys now if he comes in at two million or less that's good value I can acknowledge that but 
if it's more than that, I feel like I can do better in UDFA almost. I feel like I can do better with a seven or sixth round rookie. So <clears throat> I'm not doing it. And I'm really not doing it if you're going to bring him back to start because I'm, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of the injuries and I'm tired of the inconsistent play. So yeah, hoping to move on from Phil Haynes. Either way, if the off season doesn't go well for him and there's no money out there for him, bring him back on a cheap one year deal. Okay. Again, $2 million or less. I won't complain. But I just want to change things in that interior. I'm sick of that interior, man. I feel like th pretty much everything in there, except for like Anthony Bradford and Oluwatimi, needs to just get turned over. All right. Uh, that is it for Phil Haynes from my perspective. I know he's not the most compelling player, but he is a player that we need to discuss. Uh, more players coming soon. More videos coming soon. But uh, that'll do it for now. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you see it. And uh, yep, yeah, more videos coming soon.